Now, despite the feelings that the blues about the blues in the church, religious imagery exists throughout many classic blues songs, and that's why we're doing all the selections we're doing tonight. Uh, some are famous, while others are obscure, but themes of salvation, damnation, redemption, and sin flow throughout. But there was a growing distance between the blues and gospel, and songs like Frank Stokes' You Shall epitomize this divide. Let me read the words. Oh well, it's our Father who art in heaven. The preacher owed me ten dollars, he paid me seven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If I hadn't took the seven, Lord, I wouldn't have gotten none. Oh well, some folks say that a preacher won't steal. I caught about 11 in the watermelon field. Just a cutting and slicing, got a tearing up the vine. They're eating and talking most of the time. Oh well, you see a preacher lay behind the log, a hand on the trigger, got his eye on the hog. The hog said, hmm. The gun said, zip. Jumped on the hog with all his grip. Now, when I first went over to Memphis, Tennessee, I was crazy about the preachers as I could be. I went out the front porch, a walking about, invite the preacher over to my house. He washed his face, he combed his head. The next thing he wanted to do is slip in my bed. I caught him by the head man, kicked him out the door. Don't allow my preacher in my house no more. <laughs> So we got three in a row here. Shayla Lane Blooms um, is the first.
not so far from the Bible, from the Psalms to Lamentations to Apostle Paul's warnings about suffering, the Bible is filled with the blues. How long, O oh Lord, how long, infuses many of the agonizing concerns expressed by people of faith throughout the millennium. And while we already have seen that slavers were the slaves were suspicious of the white man's religion, they also found solace in the plight of Israel, the flight from slavery, and the suffering of Jesus. The message of Jesus is, in fact, blues preaching. While the church in many places has become a haven for the well-heeled and well-adjusted, the message of Jesus, really, of all faithful people, has been the audacity to reclaim Jesus as savior and liberator of a marginalized people. When taken seriously, the work of God is to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Truly faithful people cannot help but be bruised by their lives if they are committed to God's justice rather than human want. The recognition that every person can have a stormy money Monday is at the center of the universal appeal and the message of the blues. Western R&B along with jazz. The 12 bar system became the first template for the first rock classics, Hound Dog and Johnny B. Good. Inspired the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and many other foundational groups that were part of the British invasion in the 1960s and 70s. As we see today, people's lives are still very complicated. 
We are spiritual, religious, pagan, moral, immoral. We are many things at different times. Blues artists often went back and forth between being preachers or church musicians, or sometimes both, to singing in juke joints. Even blues musicians outside of the church produced what James Cone calls a secular spirituality, which was not always intentionally based on scripture, but had the same sense of lament and desperation that traditional gospel music had. Like church music, the blues is keenly aware of the fragility of life, and it mourns loss and struggle. Like T-Bone Walker's Stormy Monday, the pain of the week is connected to the sacredness of Sunday. Otis Moss III writes that America is living a stormy Monday, but the pulpit is preaching Happy Sunday. The world is experiencing the blues, while the church is becoming a place where Christianity is nothing more than capitalism in drag. That's his quote. So now we're going to sing um, a song that uh, most recently, well, a long time ago, but it's sung occasionally, and it was um, done by The Who, Eric Clapton. It's called Eyesight to the Blind. person of faith. In fact, we just, as Christians, experience the central days of our faith, Holy Week, and the statement of faith that God is good and that life can be too. The difficulty is that for a very long time, Christians have lived a Christmas and Easter faith, not wanting, you know, only wanting the happy days of the year. And the old adage, Friday's here but Sunday's coming, which is attributed to uh, a pastor named S.M. Lockridge, reminds us of the interconnectedness of farewell suffering and joy. In fact, Christians who ignore the challenges of the blue, the fine blues, the final meal, the excruciating and devastating death and the amazing resurrection cannot really understand what joy from a Christian perspective is. There are no hills without valleys. And the blues today needs to be reclaimed by all people of faith if we are to make sense of a time that is filled with stormy Mondays. We need to stop blaming God for all the pain and suffering around us and seek the real reason for why the world is in such pain. It is, of course, us. We can allow evil to thrive, 
or we can work to minimize the evil that we cause. So as the blues moved north, it changed. And one of the great um, writers of blues music, uh, Willie Dixon, called the poet laureate of the blues and the father of the modern Chicago blues, uh, wrote this great song. Now, some of you know how much I like to word, use the word evil, so we had to include this. <laughs> around the world today are nothing new, and yet they are solvable. Poverty, lack of education, drugs, racism, religious hatred, all symptoms of a much deeper problem. Whether we want to admit it or not, the ills we are struggling with today are the legacy of our ancestors' behavior. Unless we admit that, admit that not a thing can be solved. So we are called, of course, to give a hand up. And the idea that each individual can do for him or herself alone is a false one. The black experience tells us that, and it's hard for us to see that sometimes. But we are, in fact, our brothers and sisters' keepers, and they are ours. The blues reminds us that every person has sorrow, and the expectation that we can handle that sorrow on our own is false. The deeper problems we have as a nation are misplaced priorities in which greed has supplanted capitalism and self-worth has, has replaced sacred worth. If we can't see the face of God in others, the blues tells us, they probably won't see it in us. So Tobacco Road um, was made most famous, at least in my lifetime, um, by the Winter Brothers in 1970, but it's been recorded by many, many people over the years. And um, I'd never heard of the Nashville Teens. Anybody ever hear of them? Yeah. yeah, some of you, a few, yeah. I'd never heard of them, but they were <laughs> one of the first ones to do it. Uh, so Tobacco Road. Mama died, daddy got drunk. 
Let me hear to die a row in the middle of tobacco speak about that. The church had has always been part of the problem, but it also has always been part of the solution. And it could be more than it has in the past, I think. It's not a new concern. In 1903, W.E.B. Du Bois wrote that slavery was the dark triumph of evil over humanity. It grew up in the shadow of the church, and the church nurtured it. Apartheid in South Africa was the same kind of thing. It thrived under the watchful eye of devout Christians whose financial well-being mattered more to them than their spiritual well-being. Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. He also believed that this movement must be fueled by faith supported by love. If we don't love, he said, we will be like plants without water. So the church and all religious communities must be the answer, not the question, the solution, not the problem. If our souls are not nurtured by our spiritual experiences, they wither. The blues is still alive and well today, using many of the same themes that were used in the past. And the names of the blues artists of the past are just too many to mention, but here's some of them. These are those who have died. We've sung some of their songs. Sister Rosetta Tharp is one of my favorite. Look her up on the internet. She played this mean Gibson SG guitar like you couldn't believe. All these wonderful people. Bob Dylan, by the way. You know? <laughs> Sorry. I always thought Bob Dylan invented rap. Isn't that, don't you think it's rapping? When he does that? But actually, he's, <laughs> thank you. But he's, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you don't have a microphone. Wow. Uh, <laughs> 
But, oh, he was, actually, he was much better at it than I was. Um, every single thing I read about mentions Bob Dylan as a foundational part of the development of the blues in America. Jeff Healy, one of the great blues guitarists, blind um, and died very young. And blues music is still alive and well today. Now, I've seen a number of these folks in concert, and, and I have to tell you that some of the, they're, they're just amazing. And Bonnie Raitt has a new CD out. If you like Bonnie Raitt, you need to buy this CD, because it is one of her, maybe her best thing ever. Um, Joe Bonamassa is maybe the best living guitarist there is. And Gary Clark Jr. isn't far behind. He's younger, so he, he'll catch up. Um, but all of these folks, some of them have appeared here in concert. And of course, here are some others as well. Uh, not just uh, musicians, but uh, bands. So, we're going to sing for you this funny song that I found. It was actually published in a theological magazine. Um, I just sort of fell in love with it. I think it's, I think it's so funny. It was written in 2012 by Ben Myers. As you can see, he went to church with some friends. He's not African American, but he went to an African American church, and three hours later, he, he got out. There's some other great songs um, by some amazing people as well, but I thought this was fun, so we'll just do this. have shown there's a possible cure going to church or the mosque or going to worship someplace whatever your flavor 
Organized spirituality helps chase the blues away. Being spiritual and religious is far healthier for you than being one or the other. A 2011 Gallup poll interviewed, now this is, I've never seen a poll of this, 300,000 people, that's huge, and found that frequent religious service attendees report more positive emotions and fewer negative emotions on a day-to-day -day basis compared with those who do not attend regularly. People who attend worship experience the same levels of sadness and happiness as those who do not on six days of the week, but on the day they attend worship, it climbs dramatically and it helps them through the week. So by the end of the week, they're just like everybody else, kind of, uh, you know, thank God it's Friday. But that Friday or Saturday or Sunday, worship helps them get through that week. And if that isn't enough of that statistical technical stuff, there was a 2010 study published in the Journal of the, Amer the American Sociological Review that found that social networks within religious services increase the level of satisfaction people have with their lives over those who do not attend worship regularly. So, we have come full circle. The blues began as a response to the troubles of life. It thrived as a balance to what its devotees saw as hypocrisy, judgmental behavior by Christians, and narrow-mindedness. But deeply central to the blues then and now is the sense that, through it all, God continues to walk with us on our journey. We seek joy, but we must weather the stormy Mondays, Tuesdays, all days, before we get to the promised land. Confession, forgiveness, restoration, redemption, God and the blues. And finally, this is a um, standard 12-bar uh, blues that uh, I, I paraphrased the 55th Psalm and put it to a blues rhythm and I sang it last, last summer. So we want to do it here as our last song of the evening. And I think, ooh, right on time. <laughs>